El primero orador es, eh, mi panel es el panel 6 y el primer orador es Kesaf Kandra de India. Um, yes. Morning, friends. Uh, before I start, there are two disclaimers. First, that I work for the government. I work as CEO in the largest water utility of India. It's called Delhi Jal Board. Second disclaimer is that I also come from a country which is more than a billion population and more than eight million gods and goddesses. In my country, goddesses are more important. And almost all the rivers, main important rivers which emanate from Himalaya, have acquired the status of goddesses. But the biggest paradox in India is all its large rivers are highly polluted. It baffles me no end to find that a highly spiritual country which has given yoga to the entire world has actually has, has actually defiled all its goddesses without compunction. And that leads me to two, two issues. First issue what is the reason behind that? The first reason that comes to my mind is that government had ceded from its assigned place. There was a complete lack of regulation and a result of this, things have come to such a pass. And that's one. The second analysis which comes to my mind is that it's always the economic reality which takes precedence of, over spiritual reality. And against this background, we need to understand the fundamental economics of water. Now, what is water? Water is certainly not a public good in the strict economic sense. Water, for, for being a public good, a good has to be non-rival, non-excludable. Use of a particular individual does not preclude the use of the same commodity by another individual. That makes it non-rival. And non-excludable, well, you cannot deprive anybody from that commodity. Certainly in the case of water, you cannot deprive anybody from consumption of water. But it is a rival commodity because the availability of water is quite limited in the entire world. Limited to the extent that we have only 1% of the clean water in the entire globe of entire available water. And 1% of that fresh water is also confined, 78% of that fresh water is confined in either glaciers of Greenland or Antarctica, and 22% or 21% is, is there in the aquifer. So we are left with only 1% of the water, fresh water, what is lying at the surface. That is the stark reality. And so, the, the economic, this particular economic reality also leads us to find that what exactly is water. And there is no debate that it's a common good. And common good where the supply is limited where the demand is rising and there's a lack of management. Now, is there a solution to tackle this issue? Yes, indeed, there is a solution. And the solution is called common pool resource problems. And it's well established. Through the history, yesterday also I dwelt upon this issue briefly, that Common pool resource problems, the biggest issue 
is the management. For entire two days, yesterday and today, the debate was hovering around the central issue, whether it should be private sector or public sector. And I entirely agree with all those, including Prof. Veswas, that we cannot exclude the efficiency of private sector from the management of water. It's like throwing the baby with the bath water. And, and the world, as it is lying today, cannot afford this big mistake. Having said that, it also leads me to introspect, because I work in the government, and my utility is entirely government-owned, so is there a great virtue in, in the management of a utility which is entirely run by the government? Not so. There are umpteen number of cases where you have rent-seeking behavior of, of the functionaries working in the government utilities. You have massive projects which actually lead nowhere after some point of time. You have another problem called in economic strict economic sense, it's called gamekeeper poacher problem, that if you lapse on certain count, you do not punish yourself. And this kind of practice we often see in all the utilities which is entirely run by the government. But at the same time, somebody quoted of the riots of La Paz in Cochabamba, well, indeed, there were riots, and we, we should not repeat the riots. We should learn from what actually went wrong. To my mind, what went wrong is the basic mistake that we transferred ownership in the hands of the private sector. Water, as a commodity, is a common. It should not be transferable. It should not go into private hands, one. Second, the basic issue of pricing was devolved into the hands of the private sector. So once you do these two things, it makes a dangerous cocktail, which actually result in the public uprising and, uh, and outrage. Exactly the same is the situation. What we need to do is to actually salvage the situation. Recently, there's a great spurt towards remunicipalization, especially in the developed world and in South America also. But it does not take out the virtue, the basic virtue of the efficiency of the private sector, especially in the management of water. If water is scarce, population is going up, especially the cities where the insatiable cities where the demand is constantly growing up, there has to be new paradigm in the management of water. And we need to seek that paradigm, not against or without private sector, but along with the private sector. Well, that leads me to another central debate for which we all are sitting here, that human rights to water, this particular phrase, is it going to serve some purpose? Well, declarations have been made, but what good is this declaration when millions of population could not see its enforcement in real sense? So that takes out the steam from this declaration that if human right to water is non-enforceable, when countries do not incorporate this particular commitment in the constitution, then it is of no good. Second factor is human right to water also takes out a very, very vital fundamental or rather ignores a very fundamental reality which is lurking, lurking in front of the entire globe is the environmental concerns. If water is only for the human being, what will happen to all our forests, what will happen to all our, our rivers, what will happen to all our animals. 
The sustainability issue, if it pertains to the human being, same sustainability issue has to pertain to the natural world also. The availability of water and greenhouse gas concerns, especially, leads me to the third issue on which I would like to dwell upon is the wastewater. And to my mind, the availability and the supply of water is totally predicated by the supply of good quality water and the treatment of entire wastewater which is generated by a city or a cluster or a set of population. Unless until we focus upon that, unless until we focus upon wastewater, we are not going to achieve the, the basic objective of improvement of the management of the supply of drinking water. As a practitioner, and I've been working in this water utility for more than two years, what I've realized is that like any other water utility, all water utilities have an engineering focus. And to my mind, this is the gravest mistake that the world is committing. Water and wastewater are basic urban planning subjects. We need to read, find the focus again. We need to situate it entirely in the realms of urban planning and see that how our organic entity like city functions on the basic economic reality. The second factor is wastewater, unlike water, is also agnostic to the public-private binary. That involvement of private sector in the treatment of wastewater is generally never objected by anybody. And so this makes it extremely safe area for the involvement of total involvement of the private sector also. So you have a wider canvas available. <coughs> Wastewater, to my mind, is a larger equity issue. Equity issue because of two reasons. One is that untreated wastewater not only contaminates the original source, but also pollutes and compromises the existing water supply system. It also contributes to the greenhouse gas emission to a large extent. I was reading the other day that the gases, especially methane and oxides of nitrogen, emitted by these untreated sewage flowing in the open drains contribute enormously to the total greenhouse effect. The effect of methane is 24 times higher than carbon dioxide. Oxides of nitrogen have almost 210 times more impact than the carbon dioxide itself. So it's the equity issue which were, we are linking in our entire discourse linked with the climate change, the wastewater issue finds centrality and we must address this particular problem. Third concern as a practitioner, especially in the developing world, is that wastewater is not a story about wastewater alone. Wastewater, especially in the de developing world, has three more other components. And the planning must go in tandem, especially must take into account all these three elements. These elements are solid waste management, the sludge management, and the septage management. And septage management is an actual real human tragedy, which we see on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily basis, in all our developing world, in cities of the developing world. Now, unless until we have a comprehensive plan to treat all that, these four elements, we would not be able to overcome the crisis created by the wastewater itself. And coming to the last issue, that whether the, the debate of having a central plant 
or a decentralized plant in the wastewater, which paradigm is better? Economically speaking, a centralized plant, the financial NPV of a centralized plant remains static. The economic NPV grows up with the growth of population, but then again, there is a factor of population. Beyond that, it starts diminishing. So there comes the virtue of decentralized environmental planning. And I'm very happy to share that in my utility, we also treat wastewater. We have adopted decentralized environmental models of treating wastewater. So not only it does, removes the entire flow of wastewater, crisscrossing the entire city, but it also provides great relief to the community which is generating, which is situated in unplanned manner, relieving of its, the problems of the wastewater there itself, and also providing the total, the effluent which is coming out of it, the treated water for its other uses. Well, the story of the developing world is to be written at this stage where the, the wastewater story is totally based upon the availability of the land and such saturated cities where there is no land, ample land available for creating mega structures in terms of STPs, we need to find environmental mechanism to overcome this problem. And there are umpteen number of cases and examples in which the world has seen that the environmental ways often overcome the traditional problems. We have initiated in our own humble manner at different parts of Delhi. I hope that this will lead us to very fruitful results for the poor of the country and, and the city. And we all hope that we move towards environmentally friendly and a cohesive, a world where water is ample, safe, clean, and sufficiently available to every one of us, including the poorest of the poor of the world. Thank you.